I bet this is something you've all been waiting for. When it comes to guides, I've pretty much made a 5 star guide on every single character that has come out in Honkai Star Rail in version 1.0. Today we're going to be making a tier list regarding these 5 stars in version 1.0 and this will be changed in the future for every end of the patch as well. So if this is something that you're very interested in when it comes to knowing the meta, what I think of the characters at the current moment, what can change, all of that type of stuff, make sure to leave a sub and a like on the video because I very much appreciate it and it'll let me know that you are into this type of video. But as well, we're going to be prefacing a couple of things when it comes to this video and this tier list, which is with the current 5 stars that are out in version 1.0, we're going to talk about the characters that are useful now and how they're used now we're not going to think about the end game at the current moment because no one is at it everyone is still trying to get to trailblazer level 60 and everybody's trying to get the resources and the materials that they need to get those characters up to that point so for the current moment we are going to focus on early to mid game content because this is what everyone is at right now of course, when we hit to version 1.1, we might start seeing a lot of these characters in their end game status, see what teams that are going to be built with all of the supports that you're going to be building in the future, and of course, other things like that. So let's go ahead and start with the bottom of the list, which is housed by one character, which I think a lot of you probably already know is going to be Himiko. Now, Himiko, in all honesty, I do think that she is probably the worst standard 5 star at the current moment, but I do want to preface one thing. I do think she's going to get stronger in the future for sure because of one thing, and that is because of the mode Memory of Chaos. Now, Memory of Chaos is a very, very difficult mode where they really want you to use the elements that the enemies are weakness to or they have weakness to. And this is something that I think she is going to excel at in the future. With her having an AoE fire ult and her having AoE skill, she's going to be able to break these shields out and of course use her follow-up attack to do even more damage to the boss if they have fire weakness. I do think in the future when everyone has their Himiko geared up with the right relics, she might be very strong but at the moment she does not do enough damage that a lot of the current units that are able to dish out with very little investment so yeah. Himiko, not much to explain but other than that, she is a pretty nice character from what her kit has but at the moment I don't think with what everyone has at the moment regarding no relics or very minimal investment in those relics that she's going to be able to show her true potential at the current moment. So that's going to be pretty much the seed tier by itself. I do think she's going to end up somewhere nice in the future when it comes to her energy regeneration coming back from her ult on kills, her follow up attack, her skill doing AoE and her ult doing AoE. I think she's going to do just fine in the future but for now she is the only one at the C tier. At the bottom of B tier, we are going to have someone who I thought was very, very busted and broken until, of course, Memory of Chaos appeared, which showed a big highlight in why this character is going to be at the bottom, which is Clara. Now, Clara is a really nice character, of course, with her niche of follow-up attacks coming from her counter. She is a very strong unit and a very tanky one and does a lot of damage to a lot of enemies. From her ult to her skill, she does a lot of physical damage and she's one of the best physical damage dealers, but... Her mechanic and her teams don't really line up with a lot of the units that are currently out at the moment and also can basically waste a lot of turns when it comes to Memory of Chaos. Now Memory of Chaos is going to be something that I'm going to be basing a lot of these characters off of just because it is going to be the slightly end game content or it is the end game content for what we know right now. A lot of people can't get past really far into it at the current moment like I said with minimal investment but at the moment this is the only end game we know of so far. So at the moment, Clara is at the bottom of B tier because she is going to be wasting a lot of the turns that she has with her because you have characters that are going to be neglecting her actual passive. Japar takes away taunt with his own native taunt and also March 7th freezes enemies which make them slower to attack. So with these two being one of her best teammates, with her being with teammates that take away, you know, these type of shields or take away the aggro with, you know, Fire MC needing it, Japar needing it, all these other characters having taunts, is going to throw off Clara and her turn restriction for you to get the max rewards in a lot of these di different modes such as Forgotten Halls and Memory of Chaos. Now the next character at the top of B tier is going to be Yan Qing. Now I do think Yan Qing is a very very strong DPS, especially the solo DPS because not only does he have almost 75% native crit rate, this dude has so much you barely need any on your artifacts or your relics. This is insane to have on him and he also can be built with straight crit damage so yes he is going to be doing some nuking type damage in the future. I do think he's a very very strong early to mid game character but at the moment with the other DPS's that are in the game he has to be put somewhere and he's going to be at the B tier 
He is very strong. He does have that nuking capability with how much crit rate he has on him. He does have to deal with that soul still sink, which he has to not get hit with. So that is a little bit of a minute detail that, you know, puts him a little bit lower. But he, like I said, does a lot of damage, has really good nuking ability, has a fat ton of crit rate at the start of just with his passive alone. And also he can inflict freeze, which is really, really good when it comes to a defensive measure on the character. So yes, Yangqing is a really good character, but of course he has to be placed at the top of B. Let me preface this really quickly that I don't think any of these characters are bad at the moment. I do think any of these five stars, if you get them from your starter banner, if you get them from standard, you lost 50 50. I do think these are all plus investment characters at the current moment. I think they will get better over time. But at the moment with how people have their investment in these characters and how they're going to be performing at the current moment, I do think that these are going to be where their placements are in the game for sure at the moment. Now when it comes to A tier, we're going to be talking about one of these characters and I want everyone to hear me out before they start you know, going into the comments and typing what they think is going to be Jin Yi Wan. Now Jin Yi Wan of course is our brand new lightning damage dealer but I do want to preface why he's at the bottom of A which I do think this is a pretty high tier rating just because like I said none of these five stars are technically bad and being up in A is just means you're a really really good unit. But supports are the name of the game when it comes to any Hoyo vs game and there's just so many supports that we're going to be talking about in a quick second that they just go over Jin Yi Wan. It's just very apparent. But I'm going to be talking about these in a quick second. But Jin Yuan, again, is our AoE lightning damage dealer. He has very good shield break on his lightning lord hits. Very good shield break on his skill. Very good shield break on his ult. They all do really good damage. The only thing holding him back right now is that because a lot of people are minimally invested in or they don't have enough luck, I guess you could say, in relics, his speed is not up to par for him to be able to outrun his lightning lord and for him to get the full 10 stacks now i do think in the future possibly in version 1.1 possibly in version 1.2 that people are going to start having jing yuan right there ready to be you know be ready to be able to be used and being able to have that speed with other characters or his own build to be able to outrun his lightning lord and get those six stacks get those 10 stacks so that you're able to do his max damage but overall his lightning lord mechanic isn't what's holding him back it's just the next few units that i'm going to be talking about are just way too good they do so much for the team they can be placed on any team and i'm about to explain what they are the next one is going to be welt now welt is a very very strong unit by far one of the best slowers one of the strongest slowers one of the strongest debuffers one of the strongest buffers in the game by far he has the ability to slow before the fight starts he has the ability to slow enemies on his ult he has the ability to buff damage dealt on his ult he just does so much and he does amazing shield break on his skill being able to hit multiple enemies at the same time just like Asta. He has a very good set of moves in his kit that he's able to do so much in the team. He has a lot of AoE. He's able to inflict that slow, get you more turns, make it so that enemies aren't able to move. He's just an overall amazing character. Now with 100%, I do think he should be placed a little bit higher. But at the moment, we do know Luocha and Yukong are going to be imaginary units. So we don't want to say that, yes, we should put him at the very top of the list just because he's imaginary. He's the only imaginary. No, I do think that although he is the only imaginary unit in the game, he provides a lot with this kit, but a lot of these other characters that I'm going to be talking about in a quick second are just a little bit better than Wilt at the moment. But let's go ahead and get into the next one, which is Bronya. Now, people are probably holding their eyebrows in the air thinking, whoa, you just said Bronya is in A tier? Yes, I'm going to be saying why, and it hurts me to say that she's in A tier because she's by far one of my favorite characters in the game, one of my favorite units in the game, but... When you think about Bronya, I want to say that she is very skill point hungry and isn't needed in 100% of all the teams that you have. Now, she is going to be good, of course, with Jin Yuan and Sele, and we're going to be talking about Sele in the future. But Jin Yuan can benefit from having Bronya on the team, being able to place him above his Lightning Lord, get more stacks in. But as I said before, when you have Bronya, you kind of have to use her skill. And when you use your skill, of course, the economy for your skill points has two people who are very hungry to ask for those skill points. So you have the DPS always using the skill, especially when you have other characters like Sele, who's going to have multiple turns, or Jin Yuan, who needs that skill to get his Lightning Lord stacks. That's the skill point gone. Bronya needs a skill point gone. Say you need a shield or a heal, that's a skill point gone. Bronya is just very skill heavy. And in a game where a lot of these skills are very crucial to be able to keep your team alive or being able to buff your DPS, Bronya has it. She has the awesome ability of giving you the next turn for your next character. 
But overall, even with the crit damage buff, the attack buff, the moving your character to the next slot. But since Bronya is so skill heavy, I think it does put her down just a little bit because you don't technically need Bronya to be able to make your team do a lot of damage because there's other sources like Ting Yun, Asta, Pella, a lot of these other characters do a lot of this as well very well. And Bronya, I just think she just has to scale every time she's on the field or you're kind of wasting her potential when it comes to using her on the field. So I do think she's an awesome unit. She's an amazing unit, but of course, I do think the skill economy goes down into the negatives once you put her on her team. And I don't think you have to have her on every team for sure. I do think a lot of teams can benefit well from other characters being used, but Bronya. But of course, she's still a very, very strong unit. Now, at the very top of A tier, I want to put Fire MC here. And of course, Showblazer as a whole, because although we kind of want to exclude Physical MC and Fire MC, they're both the same character in a way. So we're going to be talking about Fire MC. Fire MC, just overall an amazing unit, one of the strongest units in the game defensively for sure. Of course, we haven't talked about the other guy, but we'll get into that in a quick second. But yes, Fire MC has the ability to taunt, has the ability to put shield on the whole team when it comes to using your ult, your normal, your skill. This is really, really good, and he also has amazing, amazing damage reduction on himself as well. So yes, having Fire MC, of course, makes everything amazing. He's able to help you in Simulated Universe by not even needing a healer. He's able to help you in a lot of different situations, and he has a lot of good shield breaking on his abilities, especially when you get his enhanced normal attack, when you use his ultimate, and of course, when you want to take the aggro away from other characters, when it has lock on, you can use your taunt. He just has a lot of really good defensive abilities and a lot of shield opportunities to be put on other characters characters that he just does a lot for the team he keeps them alive he does what he's supposed to do and him as a defensive option we don't have very many in this game that just puts him at the top of a for sure now we are at the coveted s tier now the s tier is by far the characters that are going to be they're just too good at the game they make this game way too easy they basically cover the role that they need the most and with the scarce amount of options that there are at the current moment in this game they are just at the top of the list now at the bottom of s tier we are going to put Japard. Now, Jappar just has way too much in his kit. He's just absolutely an amazing shielder in this game over Fire MC for sure. He has the native ability to add taunt to himself. He has the ability to freeze, which is a good defensive option, slowing the enemies down and doing a little bit of damage. And of course, the team white shield in his ult that's almost impenetrable because of how high health the shield actually is. Like I said, him having the innate ability to taunt is just overall amazing. You don't need to waste a skill like Fire MC. His shields are much bigger than Fire MC's and then the ability to freeze if the opponent is freezable is just an overall good defensive option because you are able to slow them down, add some more DPS in before they do their own set of damage or even buff themselves. So yes, I do think this is pretty much simple to explain. Japard is just absolutely an amazing character and does deserve to be at that S tier spot. Now I'm just going to go ahead and say it, Bailu is the next character. Now Bailu is just overall an amazing healer and of course with the scarce amount of healers with Natasha being the only one, yeah she just does so much for your team. She keeps them infinitely alive for sure, amazing amazing healer. She's able to have AoE healing on her skill which is absolutely amazing. Of course when you have her built these ticks do so much, she's able to do ult AoE heal which is going to help all your team be back to full health 100% and they get the added passive to get more healing when they get hit. So yes, Bailu is just overall an amazing healer with so much healing potential and she's also able to resurrect your allies which if anything goes wrong, Bailu's able to res them back and you're back just good as new is like nothing ever happened so she's able to correct your mistakes for you which is honestly just an amazing option to have on a healer. Like I said, Bailu is a very very high tiered character at the moment just because of how scarce she is in her role as a healer. I do think when they add more healers into the game and they have more utility in their kit, I do think Bailu might get knocked down a couple tiers when it comes to their resources and their usefulness in many teams because at the moment we just don't have a lot of options and that's why Japard and Bailu at the S tier rank. Now this might be controversial because of course y'all were waiting for me to say her name, but I think at this moment in the game for sure Sele is by far the best character in Honkai Star Rail. Now, Sele for sure just has too much damage. She has too much going for her. She's a single target DPS with her numbers, but AoE in fashion with her passive. She just does too much damage. She, just doesn't, she doesn't allow characters to get their own turn because she's able to, you know, use her skill and give her speed back up. Get the resurgence buff and do another kill. Use your ult, take another kill, get her resurgence buff again, get another kill. 
and then say you have Bronia or you have another speed booster, she might be at the top of the list and then she starts going again. She's just overall one of the best characters in the game for sure and even with the minimally invested Sela, you're able to run through mobs of enemies with just using her by herself and with even the four star pieces or the five star pieces of the quantum set which i do think quantum characters are going to be way too high in the tier list in the future just because of their relic pieces and that's going to be ignoring defense now i'm trying not to keep that as a part of her rating but you just gotta remember that is a side piece of like that's crazy to ignore 20 percent defense if you have quantum weakness and by native 10 percent from the four piece set that's nasty she does way too much damage she's able to steal so many turns because she gets that resurgence buff when you do get those kills when you get your ultimate off she just she's the aoe character with single target damage that's just a little too crazy in all honesty and the fact that they released her this early I want to see what these next DPSs can do. Now, I do think for sure that Sele might be the hardest hitting one to get thrown off the S tier really quickly if there isn't another contender when it comes to DPS. Now, of course, they're going to want to entice us with better characters in the future and with better kits or cooler kits. And with Sele, I do think she has the potential to lose S tier really quickly. But at the moment, in version 1.0, she just makes content way too easy. She blows through simulated universe. She's able to bypass memory of chaos. She's able to make overworld grinding, overworld exploration way too easy with you just being able to auto every single one of those game modes I just listed. Sela is just by far one of those amazing characters that just does too much and does way too many things to be considered anything but S tier. But that is going to be my list when it comes to the five stars in version 1.0 of Honkai Star Rail. I hope you enjoyed this list and let me know what you think in the comments if you disagree or agree with me. I would love to see your opinions in the comments below. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. See y'all in the next one and peace.